Hello everybody! In today's video, we are going to embark on a study of mathematics beginning with arithmetic, and uh, once we've completed that track, we will then go on to geometry, trigonometry, algebra, calculus, sky's the limit. We will go on as long as we have time. So, uh, so far we have Mondays are going to be our language days, so we're starting with shorthand and then eventually move on to grammar and other language related subjects. Uh, Tuesday is going to be our computer science day. So this is going to be our programming, our um, uh, uh, general computer knowledge, maybe a little electronics thrown in, uh, thrown in there later down the line. And uh, Wednesdays are going to be mathematics day. All right, so without further ado, let's get into it. Complete Arithmetic by Bruce M. Watson superintendent of schools, Spokane, Washington, and Charles E. White, principal of Franklin School, Syracuse, New York. And now, here's the clincher. When was this book published? It was published 1911. Think of that. The book is over 112 years old. That's pretty incredible. So, let's go ahead and jump forward to the beginning. Uh, th this book will be available in the in the description below this video. Um, it's it's through Google, so readily available uh, on uh, on their website. If you just search, uh, it's in Google Books. If you search for Complete Arithmetic, you will find this book. So let us begin. Complete Arithmetic, Arabic Notation and Numeration. Number one, that which tells how many is number e.g. 3, 7, 5, 2, and 1 half. Each of these, if it's, a if it's a quantifier, then it is a number. 2. 1 is a unit, e.g. 1 dollar, uh, 1 book, just the number itself. 1 is a unit. 3. A number that is applied to some particular thing or things is called a concrete number, e.g. 5 books, 7 dollars, 10 months. So applied to particular things or things. What does this mean? This means that it actually exists within some realm. It is an object, a tangible object in that world. That oh, when you are then counting objects like that, you are using a concrete number. Number four, a number that is not applied to any particular thing or things is called an abstract number, e.g. 5, 7, 11. So this is when you are simply dealing in the realms of pure quantity, where they don't have to be attached to something. That is the abstract. We use it in the same sense, speaking in the abstract, right? Speaking just in the theoretical. Same thing applies to numbers. All right, uh, number five. A number that is composed entirely of whole units is an integer, e.g. 6, 8, th 13. So these are numbers that are not, that can't be broken into smaller uh, uh, quantities, or as we say, subdivisions. So that is the realm of, of uh, integers, actually called the set of integers. Moving on to number six, one or more of the equal parts of a unit is a fraction, e.g. two-thirds. I'm not sure. I think that's supposed to be a two-thirds. Yeah, because later on it's, it's, it's a two-thirds. So we'll say two-thirds. It could be four-thirds. Two-thirds, seven-eighths, twenty-five-elevenths. All right. So one or more of the equal parts of a unit. One or more of the equal parts of a unit is a fraction. Number seven, the number above the line is a fraction. Uh, uh, let's see, the number above the line in a fraction is the numerator. The number below the line in a fraction is the denominator, e.g. in the fractions two-thirds, seven-eighths, and twenty-five-elevenths. The numerators are two, seven, and twenty-five. The denominators are three, eight, and eleven. So it usually, uh, well not not always usually, but uh, the denominator will be some complete unit, and then the numerator will be a portion of that. So um, that's all I'm going to say about number seven. Number eight, the product of equal factors is a power. So four is a power of two. The product of equal factors is a power. Four is a power of two because two times two is equal to three. Oh, sorry, is equal to four. Eight 
is a power of 2 because 2 times 2 times 2, or as we say 2 cubed, 2 cubed is 8. 81 is a power of 3 because 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 is equal to 81, or we would say 3 raised to the fourth, right? So the numbers, the resultants of the resultant uh, um, uh, products are are the powers. 100 is a power of 10 because 10 times 10 is 100. And then they challenge us here. Name three other powers of 10. Well, 10, uh, 10 times 10 times 10 or 1,000, that's a power. Uh, 10 raised to the fourth, uh, that'd be 10,000, right? So that's another power of, of 10. Number nine, a fraction whose denominator is 10 or a power of 10 is, is a decimal fraction. So a fraction whose denominator is 10 or a power of 10 is a decimal fraction. So anytime you have the integer 10 subdivided, that is going to be called a decimal fraction. It's built into the name, actually. Uh, decimal stands for deci is 10, decimal fraction. Number 10, expressing numbers by means of figures or letters is notation. Expressing numbers by means of figures or letters is notation. So here, for instance, we have Roman, uh, Roman notation. We're going to cover that uh, next week. But here, it, that would be 32. X, 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 and then two I's, that's 32. 11, expressing numbers by means of figures is Arabic notation. Expressing numbers by means of figures is Arabic notation, e.g. 349, 600, what was that? 6,872.351. 1 through 9 are called significant figures because they have values. Okay, They, they actually express, express a particular value. They are called significant figures. Uh, the figure zero is called a cipher, not or zero, and it expresses no value. It has no no part. It's merely a placeholder. It is used to give the significant figures their proper places in expressing numbers. So you can think of it as like a block that's holding the values far enough away from the origin, which we're going to get into a little bit later, to help uh, uh, signify what that value is. Number 12, the value of each significant figure depends upon the place which it occupies when used with other figures in expressing a number. The value of each significant figure depends upon the place which it occupies. So you see your position is very important when you're trying to read numbers. The value of a figure in any place is 10 times as great as it would be if it occupied the next place to the right, and one tenth as great as it would be if it occupied the next place to the left. Since the value of a figure is increased tenfold as it is moved one place from right to left, and divided by 10 as it is moved one place from left to to write, Arabic notation is said to be based on a scale of 10, or the scale of Arabic notation is a decimal scale. The decimal scale extends through decimal fractions as well as through integers, the scale of increase and decrease being uniform from the highest unit of the integer to the lowest unit of the decimal. The names of the units occupying the different places are called orders or unit uh, are orders of units, and each group of three orders of units constitutes a period. The left-hand period of an integer may contain only one or two figures or orders of units. It is then called an incomplete period. So, what does this look like? So, on the table here, we talked about periods here. So let's see here. Let's go straight to the diagram because that'll help us explain. So you see how uh, this point right here, um, I can't highlight it, but this, hold on, let's see, can I highlight text? Let's see here. 
note text. Nope. Can't do that. Oh, wait, there we go. I just showed up. Undo. Can I remove? Oh, well. I guess we're, I guess we're stuck with that. Okay, so um, where that yellow note is, that obnoxiously yellow note, is supposed to be the decimal, okay? The decimal point is placed between the units and tenths place. So all of the units to the left of the decimal are called, uh, are, or I should say all, all of the positions to the left of the decimal point are called units places. All the uh, positions to the right of the decimal point are called tenths places between units and tenths places. Figures at the left of the decimal point express integers, and figures at the right of the decimal point express decimal fractions. So notice, increasing by powers of 10 to the left, decreasing by powers of 10 to the right. So we're always taking away a power of 10 as we move to the right. The different orders of units are numbered from the decimal point both to the right and to the left. The values, in fact, if we read through this, order of units. So if we start here at the decimal point, the unit immediately to the left is called units. One more over, tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, hundred thousands, millions, ten millions, hundred millions, billions, ten billions, hundred billions, trillions, ten trillions, hundred trillions, and eventually going on to infinity itself but always growing by a power of 10. Units to the right uh, are start off at tenths. So this is some unit that is uh, a, a, a fraction of 10. Then hundredths, this would be some unit that is a fraction of, of 100. Uh, thousandths, a fraction of a thousand. Ten thousandths, hundred thousandths, millionths, decreasing by a power of 10 all the way until we get to negative infinity. Very good. The values of the different orders, let's see, where was I? Yep, the values, uh, so this is C, the values of the different orders of units increase uniformly from right to left and decrease uniformly from left to right in a tenfold ratio throughout the integers and the decimal. The name of each period is the same as that of the right-hand place in that period. So, the name of each period is the same as that of the right-hand place in that period. Uh, commas are used to separate the periods co for convenience in reading. So, uh, number 14. Actually, you see here, uh, commas are used to separate the periods for convenience in reading. Okay, when you think about it, this would be l like the number... 3,000. 3,000 is a period of 1,000. So therefore, you have your value, which is 3, and then you attach 1,000 to that. And we'll see here, moving forward, I think, yeah, on, on number 15. So, 14. A number that is composed of an integer and a decimal is called a mixed decimal, e.g. 2.5, um, 31.242. 600.00006. Now notice, I'm not saying 31.242. It's uh, when you're reading these off, and in fact, it's probably going to say it here pretty soon. Yes, yeah, so I'm not going to talk about that too much. Moving on to 15. Naming the places of figures and reading numbers is numeration, e.g. to numerate the number 0.40236 we should say tenths, hundredths, thousandths, ten thousandths, hundred thousandths, forty. So it would be forty thousand two hundred thirty six hundred thousandths. Wow. Okay. So if you're just reading off point, then you just read the values that come after. But if you are going to numerate it, see, naming the places and figures and reading numbers is numeration. So the process of reading this uh, according to the rules of numeration, we would have to go to the furthest point on the number and figure out what that position is. As you see here, it says hundred thousandths. 
then what you do is you read off the value at the top as if it were on the left hand side of the integer so like this would be 40236 that's the value that it would be on the left hand side and then you have to turn that into a fraction so 40236 hundred thousands that's pretty crazy in reading numbers the word and should not be used except the integer and the decimal of a mixed decimal or between the integer and the fraction of a mixed number e.g. 30,245 is read 30,245 point uh point three two eight now the the, the modern convention is to simply read this off as a number. So you say point two, so point three two eight, and we don't really think of it in the way that they're going to speak of it now. But we'll we'll continue with their method. So three hundred twenty eight thousandths is read three hundred twenty eight thousandths. So the reason why they're saying this is you don't put the word and in there. So you wouldn't say thirty thousand. 30,245. You would say 30,245. The words run together. Uh, let's see here. Then 30,245 and 328 thousandths is read. 300 uh, is read 30,245 and 328 thousandths. Pretty neat. Moving on to 16. Read the following integers and write them as words. Okay, so this is going to be this is going to be a next video. All right, uh, a follow up to this video, uh, but that's pretty much the lesson in a nutshell. Express the following in figures. So each or, each of these are going to be various activities. Uh, let's see. I'll prob probably what I'll do is just make a very short video um, that it. Uh, uh, reads out the project prompt and then each of those values will then be demonstrated. So a little bit of a homework or a follow-up video to this. Uh, express the following numbers in figures. That will be the same thing. All right, and then Roman notation. Roman notation, expressing numbers by means of letters in Roman notation. All right, I think we're going to stop there for today. Um, so next week we will pick up with Roman notation and move forward. Uh, so thank you very much for watching. Like I said, I will I will have a follow-up video with all of these examples shown here. Um, thank you very much. Uh, and this has been day, we're on day 17 of Make a Video in Two Hour Challenge. Um, it's really fun, it's really fun. I like, I like getting into this schedule and uh, really excited about presenting mathematics. So it's a, it's a wonderful, uh, f uh, fascinating subject with so many applications and so much value. So I, I, appreci I, I appreciate you uh, joining me and have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.